Welcome everyone. I'm Colin Weston, host of the Mod Golf Podcast. Welcome to our YouTube channel, where today I have a fabulous guest who I had an earlier conversation for our longer form audio portion of the podcast or the Mod Golf Podcast. And that is Shalia Finney, who is the Senior Director of Membership Programs with the GCSAA, which is the Golf Course Superintendents Association of America. And before I continue on anymore, I just want to get her on screen here. And we're recording this today during International Women's Day. So I want to say, Shalia, happy International Women's Day. Thank you very much. What, what are you doing to acknowledge or celebrate the, the day? Anything in particular? Uh, not anything in particular. I am just, uh, I'm here working this morning, but I'm also trying to take care of myself. I think uh, women in general are not very good at that. We tend to, to give a lot. So I got up this morning. Uh, I was very happy that it was not 20 something degrees outside. And I got to take a half hour walk with my dog before I came and started to work. And then I'll be doing the same thing again this afternoon. So I'm telling every woman out there, make sure that you take care of yourself too. Wonderful. Yeah, that, that is so true for everybody out there. I work with a lot of entrepreneurs, both women and men, and that, that piece of self-care, whether that yeah. ties into to our mental health, our, our physical health, it's just so crucially important. So great for you to get out there and do that. I'm going to go for, out today uh, for a little bit and I'm playing golf tomorrow. So I'll get my 14,000 steps cool. that way here in rainy Vancouver. So uh, dodging some raindrops out there on the golf course. So making, uh, making my point to, uh, to make sure I stay engaged also. So, Hey, on the earlier conversation, we don't want to duplicate the, uh, the great chat we had there, but I do want to drill down into a couple of other things here with the work that you do with the Golf Course Superintendents Association of America. Now we did talk about how we can uh, grow the game, uh, the industry to get more women involved like yourself. And still it's, it's, it's does not represent the 51% of the population that women do in the world. We're not wow. even close there yet. So let's start by uh, uh, picking up where we left off. You talked about every year you go to, uh, to Capitol Hill as to, mm -hmm. to advocate to, uh, to senators and congresspeople there. Uh, and of course, that's National Golf Day, which I had the pleasure of being invited to a couple of years ago by Steve okay. Monin. And I, I met amazing people uh, oh. that you work with. Uh, it's unbelievable the energy and the effort that they put forward. So tell us about that and also tie that into uh, how that's going to be handled this year, considering we're still in uh, a, the world yeah. of COVID here. Yeah, so we have an amazing government affairs team uh, and there are several folks on that team and they work very hands-on with National Golf Day and We Are Golf. So We Are Golf is an association that has all the golf associations in it and we're a part of that. But National Golf Day is generally uh, physical and we get to go to Capitol Hill and it is a, it's a whole day. And I, I was a grassroots ambassador and I went to National Golf Day twice while I was uh, in that role. And we work very hard to set up the, the volunteer, the grassroots ambassador with their uh, senators and representatives. And they get to go and meet with them at their office and talk to them about things that are going on in the industry and that are on the docket for our legislators to take a look at. So those are, uh, you, can, you can imagine with all the people that you met when you were there, how many one-on-one -on -one visits are going on on that day with our, our politicians in the US here. But then there's also the service day, which is an absolutely wonderful experience. Uh, we've gotten to do that several years in a row and we get volunteers and imagine, we do this on the National Mall and some of the monuments. So imagine you're at your house and a small army comes to your house and they trim all the shrubs, they pull all the weeds and they cut the grass and they edge the sidewalks and they airify your lawn and overseed it and get the fertility down in about two or three hours. And then they're all gone. So at National Golf Day, we actually have enough volunteers that give of their time and sponsors that give equipment and mowers and overseers, And we go to the National Mall and we do all of that work and we knock all of that out. And the head groundskeeper there, Mike Stackowitz, he, he says that we do in one day, in a short two or three hours, 
the amount of work that him and his team are able to do in three or four months. So we're able to save them all that time so that they can put their resources, time and energy to other things. And it is everywhere from, as I said, airifying the lawn, cutting the grass, fixing the sprinkler heads, but then also all that gravel that surrounds the National Mall, we're able to rake all of that smooth and edge all of it and dress it all up. And just, it gives you such a feeling of pride to, to be there and looking at the National Mall and the monuments and Capitol Hill and know that you were able to play a part in dressing that up for the day. Yeah, it is amazing. I had the the pleasure and the honor to be part of that two years ago, actually three years ago. Mm. I think that was 2018 when I was there. And yeah, what takes place at the National Mall is nothing short of spectacular. And they were kind enough to let me to participate as a architect turned golf podcaster. They, uh, they, uh, maybe they took pity on me and gave me a little, uh, I don't know, like a little knife or a little instrument to go, uh, pick stones out of the grates over you, you go stand over there. We'll, we'll do the, we'll do the real work and don't, don't get in our way. So they were very, yeah. very, very kind the way they, <laughs> they treated me. Uh, but I got to participate in that. And one thing I loved was also just the general public walking by and just stopping and watching and then engaging in conversation and all of your members working as ambassadors then to educate people and let them know and raise yeah. awareness so it serves so many purposes of the, of the work that you do. And yeah, and it is crazy. In three hours there, it's like it's like magic. It is like yeah, magic. What you get is. done, you just kick butt. It is pretty amazing what you actually get done in, in the three hours. So so tell me about this year. Um, I guess also combined with last year, I'm assuming last year the event didn't happen or it tried to happen in some type of virtual way. And now this year, of course, with the security lockdown after what unfortunately happened on January 6th on the Capitol, uh, to tell us how how National Golf Day is going to be kind of reimagined and re-envisioned well, in 2021. And right now it's in flux. Uh, we are looking at a virtual event uh, with everything that's going on with COVID and, and travel restrictions and whatnot. As far as I know, there isn't a date yet, but they are working on trying to move forward with doing a, a virtual event and so a virtual fly-in and do our, our advocacy work with meeting with all of our, our folks on Capitol Hill. And I am, I am totally confident that next year we will be back bigger, better, physical, uh, doing the things that we normally do. Well, perhaps in 2022, if I am lucky enough to get an invite, I, I might have to ma- make my way over there again. I'd be, I'd be, yes. I'd be honored to, uh, to cover that event again as a Mod Golf podcast episode. That would be, that'd be fantastic. So that's in the future. So it's a little yes. segue. I kind of set this up on purpose. I want to talk about the future of the, it's for the industry, for the profession of, of agronomy and also for uh, golf course superintendents. You mentioned the numbers right now of your 19,000 members and the number mm-hmm. of, uh, of golf course superintendents there are out there. Uh, there's only a handful of women out there. What, but, but the trend is growing in the right direction in the funnel that Correct. you have with younger women. What is your hopes, dreams, aspirations with the, and also with the tools and methodologies you're putting in place now to build this infrastructure? What are your hopes in five or 10 years from now to see for uh, women uh, participation in the industry? Well, and not only, not only women. I mean, obviously, you know, that, that's my background. Mm-hmm. Um, so I am focused on that, but we're also just looking for diversity in general. And we want to make sure that everyone knows that a golf course career is a career that is open to them. So in, in that avenue, we are really working to just increase awareness. As I said in our other session, a lot of people just don't even know that this is a career path. And how fantastically awesome it is as a career path. I mean, I got to take my dog to work every day. What job do you get to do that? But it is, it is a career that is great. And, you know, you were talking about the future. So the future of golf, there was that time period, right? Back in the early 90s, where there was this big uh, emphasis on building golf courses. And quite honestly, we built too many. And then we had to go through this period of contracting and right-sizing. And I have to say that during COVID, a lot of people found golf that had not really tried it before. So I think that, you know, the future of golf is really bright. 
I think that the rounds have increased substantially during COVID. People found that it was a great safe outside activity and that it's actually fun, right? And there is this emphasis in golf course architecture and how you set up a golf course that is, is edging away from that championship golf course to a fun, inclusive golf course. So from that side of the industry, i.e. bringing in the people who pay the bills, the golfers, uh, that is growing. And I see that going in an incredibly positive trend. And then what I see for those folks that want to enter the golf course industry on the golf course maintenance side, a full quarter of our membership are baby boomers like me. We mm -hmm. are going to retire. And uh, our assistant superintendents, those folks that have been waiting in the wings to get the head job, they're going to move up. And there isn't anybody out there that's taking their positions right now. So for young people and young adults that have decided to make a career change that want to go into golf, doors wide open. You are going to be able to, to go and get an education in turf grass management and step onto a golf course and get a job and get a very good paying job with benefits. So I see the future of the golf course maintenance side industry as very rosy and bright for people that want to enter in it. And I also see it very rosy and bright on the golfer side of it. You mentioned so many times that you had talked to so many people that are talking about inclusivity and diversity in golfers and making sure that all of those diverse constituents are welcomed on a golf course and know that they're welcomed on a golf course. I see that trending happening. So I see the number of golfers, golfers increasing. So as I said, they're the ones that pay the bills. Uh, so I see that side looking very bright and I see the golf course maintenance side really bright for anybody that wants to enter the industry. Yeah. Yeah. And we know, I believe it's uh, we are golf for the ones that put out the, uh, the kind of a state of the industry and the numbers. And last year mm -hmm. it was looked at as over an 84 billion dollar a year industry in the U S yes. so it's probably closer to 90 this year, considering how things are expanded. Obviously the food and beverage hospitality is down, uh, but the rounds up, as you mentioned, I think the, the number is about 25% up across golf courses, which is, uh, which is um, amazing. So uh, the insights that you have as a golf course superintendent for, uh, for over 20 years in your background, uh, you, you know kind of the diversity uh, all over the country of small courses, yeah. you know, pitch and putts, executive courses. What trend do you see also uh, with golf courses if there's new ones or ones being reconfigured? I see there's been a big, uh, a big trend for, not a big trend, but at least a trend of perhaps having uh, kind of an out and back three, six holes and these types of things. Yeah. So what, what are your thoughts there? What, what do you see your insights uh, being close to it as, as far as kind of the future of golf courses? course design that can make it, uh, how can you say, more fun, less time consuming, yes, probably, uh, challenging, yeah. but not too easy, kind of that, that Goldilocks approach, uh, kind of that sweet spot. So what are your, your thoughts on that? What, what trends do you see that are emerging as far as uh, golf courses compared to those uh, 7,600 yard monsters that people seem to be getting away from now? So what are, what are your thoughts on that so as far as the I, trends? I see a lot of, you know, I talk to a lot of our members and a lot of them are doing golf course renovations and construction work, I call it, you know, the view from the forward tees, mm. uh, they are putting in more forward tees. So making it, you know, I, I always love this great analogy that when I was talking to an architect, he was talking about the fact that um, husband and wife start playing golf together, right? And as they age, the man gets to move forward on the tee and the woman is still on the same tee that she started off on. Right. 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 And, and so they're really looking at bringing in more forward tees for junior golfers and for uh, those of us that join the game that quite aren't that good to be playing from the back tees. So it's really an emphasis on making golf fun again. And I always love to, to talk about when I started playing golf, I'm a very competitive person. And it always drove me mad that I wasn't competitive with the men that I was playing with. And so golf drove me insane at some points. And when I became a chapter executive, I have actually played more golf uh, now than I did when I was working on a golf course every day. And I have also just come to that fact that I'm not competitive with the men that I play with, which means it, it made me focus more on the fun and just enjoying being outside the social interaction 
being able to, you know, that, that close knit group that you golf with and just enjoying the time. And since I made that mind shift, I have enjoyed golf way more than I ever did. And I see our industry really embracing that concept of bringing more people to the game by saying golf doesn't have to be 18 holes. You know, we are, I, I was talking to a golf course superintendent that is in a big Cedar Lodge in Missouri, and he has a 13 hole golf course. Interesting. And yeah. So it can, you can go play nine. You can go play three. If all you can fit in is an hour after work, you can go play three holes. You can go play nine. You can go play 13 or you can play 18. And you know what, if you're horrible at bunker shots and you hit in a bunker, pick the ball up. It's okay. Because you're not playing competitive golf. You're out there to have a social interaction. And when you get good enough to actually play in leagues and whatnot, then yes, by all means, follow the rules. But let's focus on the fun first and get hooked on the game and move forward. So well put. So well put. And I've had, I'm sure you know, Larry Gahuli, who is an uh, agronomist with the USGA, and he's uh, one of the uh, folks that is spearheading the Tee It Forward program. Like I said, I had him on the podcast uh, last year. Uh, And yeah, us guys with our frail egos there, it's like, no, no, I've always hit from the blues or the tips or it's like, yeah you're getting older and uh, you're, you're not hitting the ball as far. And guess what? It's more enjoyable. As you said, yeah. you, if you're not hitting greens and all of a sudden you've got an eight foot putt for bogey every single time, hit some greens and maybe you putting for birdie or tap ins for par. And guess what? The game is more fun and it takes less time. What yeah. a concept. <laughs> yeah. And I think that, 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 Oh, that stereotype of, you know, the golf isn't a family event. It is a family event and Mm -hmm. many golf courses are embracing that. So, you know, it doesn't have to be that dad leaves on Sunday to go play golf and you don't see him all day. Take the whole family, go out there and have a good time together. Enjoy the, the social interaction, the family bonding and enjoy being on a golf course together as a part of your family activity. Yeah, so good. So and one of the many things I love about the GCSAA is, and I'm, I'm feeling that even more of my conversation with you here, Shalia, is, is the entrepreneurial spirit that uh, exists within the organization. And we talk about, mm-hmm. you know, existing companies or organizations that are uh, in a more established, if you're an entrepreneur in that organization, they call it an intrapreneur, an entrepreneur inside yeah. the organization. And I really f- feel there's this culture of entrepreneurship and innovation that goes on there. And part of that entrepreneurship spirit is knowing you need to partner with others that yes. complementary groups and skill sets uh, to uh, propel yourself forward. And you did mention a few of them on the, on the audio podcast mm-hmm. earlier, but I wanted to ask you this, have, have you connected or aligned yourself with the PGA, with PGA Works at all? Because it seems to me that would be a natural fit for getting even more people involved in your side of the industry. Is that something yeah, you've been so, involved with? So we are talking about, you know, we're, we're talking about job boards, you know, where all of the, the online job app, job open positions are posted. Uh, we're talking about having a golf job board that we all post all of our jobs together in one site. So that is one way that we're working together. But yeah, we have been talking with PGA Works and trying to figure out how that, where is that synergy and where do we intersect? And we always talk about, you know, why reinvent the wheel if somebody else has already got the wheel? Let's just work together and use the same wheel. That is such and, an entrepreneurial and, nugget of wisdom there. I talked to so many yeah. entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs, and, they, and they've and got this mindset that I need to have a blank piece of paper and create everything from scratch. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, you don't. Actually, I have a quote. I use this one. In my first year in architecture school, back in the day, I had this old crusty German professor. And uh, when, s- when someone was agonizing over, you know, designing something original in first year, which you all think you need to do, he just said, he goes, you know what? He goes, the good ones borrow and the great ones steal. Yes. <laughs> like, I'm like what is that yes. plagiarism it's like it's like he's like no 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 and it, and it makes complete sense and that's with entrepreneurship you look outside of your industry it could be outside of the golf industry and see what is working what's connecting there in all these other different sectors and what resonates with people what connects and what what trends upward and take the best elements of that and, and kind of mix it in with what you're doing it sounds like that's what you're doing with the gcsaa oh, yeah. 
and and it depends on what the situation is. But we have different projects that we work with different allied golf associations with. But you know, COVID nineteen was one of those things that uh, it was horrific. But what was really interesting to me and what we learned was when the golf industry decides to, it can all get together and we can be very nimble. And we were able to all of us get together and produce the documents called Get Back to Golf. And it was the COVID-19 resources. And we, we were able to create templates for local states to write letters to their governors to lobby to keep golf open. And we, and there were some late nights. I remember being up and working on wording on that stuff at 11, 12 o'clock at night. But then we were nimble and we got it out very quickly. And that was all of the golf associations working together to help our members, you know, our constituents be able to succeed at something. I have always said the only reason an association exists is to serve its members. Mm -hmm. That's it. There's nothing else there. So we as GCSA are very focused on serving our members and in serving our members, you know, it's, it's the revenue part of it, right? I keep saying the golfers bring the salaries. So when we work with the other associations to serve their members who are the golfers, then we're ultimately serving our members as well. So the golf community is a really tight knit community. And depending on what the project is, we all work on things together. Got it. Well, it sounds like you're serving the 19,000 plus members very, very well. And the way things are trending upwards, I'm sure you're going to break that 20,000 member barrier oh, probably yes. sooner than later. It's going to be crazy. The fact uh, of where things are going in a positive direction. We are working on it. Uh, that that was one of my uh, personal goals when I came on board here was to get to that number in particular as quickly as we could. And uh, I do want to do a little plug on this, if you don't mind, our friends membership. Uh, this is a membership that we created because we talk, we speak very well to our membership, our 19,000 members who work on golf courses, but we don't speak directly to golfers very much. And the friends membership is how those folks can become a member of GCSAA, and then we can talk to you. We can give you information and resources and education about what golf superintendents are doing and why and, and help you network as a friend member with those folks. And, you know, we will we'll send you a newsletter. We'll send you our magazine, all kinds of resources to get you up to speed on what the superintendents are doing and why and, and just really connect you. And it's so inexpensive. It's $50. And, of course, you get swag. You'll get a bag tag and a golf towel and everything. But the more important benefit is that you're supporting with your friends membership the folks that are working on the golf course. Love it. So by being a friends member, you're giving us more resources to serve our members, but you're also connecting with education and resources with, that the superintendents have and get so that you become a more educated golfer or environmentalist, uh, even if you don't play golf. This is a way for you to be a part of this association and we can communicate with you. Love it. Love it. Well, as I always do down below in the comments, I will include the links for uh, the GCSAA.org, I believe is where we can find you and also the link yes. for what you mentor if you want to become a friend there. Uh, so we'll certainly promote that. And I'll that. give you my email address. Put my email address on there and I will answer every email I get. You ask I for it. I will. I will do that. I'll use my magic fingers to type that out and uh, and make that happen. So, uh, so that's good stuff. So, Shalia, hey, I want to leave it there because, uh, like I said, we had a fantastic conversation earlier. I want to be respectful of your time here on International Women's Day, so you can get out and uh, and enjoy yourself a little more. Or probably have to get back to uh, to doing all of the uh, the things that you love doing there professionally. So. Uh, Hey, why don't we wrap it up and, and, and leave it there and really encourage people to go to the uh, listen to the podcast episode, which I will also leave a link down below because we talked about empowering women and growing, yeah. uh, growing the industry there. Great conversation. So we won't double up on there. So, uh, so yeah, I just want to again, thank you again for spending the time. It's been a pleasure getting to know you today on the Mod Golf Podcast. Thank you so much for inviting me. This was awesome. I enjoyed it. Wonderful. All right. You take care.